Welcome back to another episode of the Um So Podcast. Uh, this week, well, well, this week we have a guest, but today, today you have just me sitting here by myself. So, before we dive into this episode, which I'm hopefully going to be talking a little bit about identity, um, we'll go ahead and uh, run through some sponsors as they help make this whole thing go. So, we have Hybrid Performance Method. Uh, I've worked with them for some time now on my nutrition. They've been wildly beneficial to me. I'm learning more about nutrition. I'm learning more how to fuel myself for performance. I'm learning more how to take care of my body so that I can make it operate at a better level. Uh, I, you know, I think performance enhancers are kind of a big thing, and I think proper nutrition is just about as important as anything else you can possibly do. So. Head over to Hybrid Performance Method, use code UMSO, and save 5% on all your subscription services with the team over at Hybrid. We also have PowerDot. PowerDot I have worked with for a really, really long time. They make an excellent unit, and uh, they have been adding more and more technology to this muscle stem within the app that controls the device. So you don't have any of these bullshit wires or anything like that. The app runs it, and so... Within that app, it tells you where you want to put all your stuff, where, where locations can be, how it, you can program it the way that you want it, as well as now the app is starting to link up with devices like uh, Strava, uh, which is a cycling app or hiking or running. Uh, it's also hooking up with Apple Fitness, and I believe we have some more coming soon as well. And so these type of things now can look at the activities that you're actually doing and recommend what the recovery settings would be for something like PowerDot. So getting smarter and smarter all the time. Just, uh, look, man, get yourself in better shape so you can get back and train more often. That's really the biggest stuff that you can do to help yourself. So use code I'm so safe, 20% on power dot. Uh, we have two great food companies. We have eat right foods and we have stay classy meats. These companies have been awesome for me as nutrition, uh, eat right foods, Man, they are prepackaged meals. It saves me on meal prep. It gives us something to eat. Bonnie and I have been using them for a long time, and it's made a big difference with just how consistent my weight has been and easy if I feel like I need to add more calories or remove a little bit. So we've been getting their, uh, we've been getting their bulk protein of their ground turkey. They also have killed it with chili. Their shrimp's delicious. Steaks, also awesome. Um, the meals they make are great. You can get rice, you can get quinoa, you can kind of build your own stuff. So head over to Eat Right Foods, use code UMSO, save 10% and get meals delivered. Save yourself time. For a hundred bucks, you get 10 meals. That's, I would, I would absolutely pay someone to do this in my kitchen for me once a week. And even more if they didn't have to be in my house. So this is basically the best version of that for me. So I recommend you do the same. Spend money, save yourself time, and eliminate inconvenience. These are meals. This is also skips the inconvenience of like, oh, man, I'm super hungry. I'm going to eat bullshit. So it's just a better route to go. Uh, you just go to so Save yourself money and save yourself a headache and hassle. We also have Stay Classy Meats, as I said. These guys are awesome. I've worked with them for a number of years, and it really is the best quality meat that you can possibly get. I also love the fact that it is sustainable, it's grass-fed, it is free-range, and so you're getting both the best quality meat that's available, and not just quality, but it fucking tastes better than anything you've ever had. I promise you that. I don't know what magic meat that you're running, but this shit is better than it. So, stay classy meats. Then, you also get the sustainability side of the grass fed and free range. We're cutting out people because we deal directly with the farmers and we have, ah, this could, it's a better bet than the fucking factory farming. And so you can build your own box. We're getting best quality meat you can and doing good shit for the planet. Come on. Just think about it. That's the best thing you could do. Plus you get awesome food. Like there's not a compromise. It's not like, Oh man, I'd love to recycle, but now I have to have these shitty paper straws. Poof. You know what I mean? They're awful. So steak, lice, and meats is good on both sides. It's way better than paper straws, and uh, we should all f celebrate it. So head over there, use code UMSO, and save yourself 10% on a box of meat. You can also build out your boxes, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, put whatever the fuck you want in it. You can load it up with all ribeyes for all they care. You'd be stoked. So steak, lice, and meats, use code UMSO, and save yourself money. 
We also have, who else do we have? No, I think that's it. We have eight brand goods and uh, Habit Coffee. Check those things out. Um, so it saves you there too. So today I wanted to go into something um, about identity. It's kind of even coming up on the podcast with a lot of people and I kind of wanted to dive a bit more into it as I need to empty my, uh, my tobacco pipe, as they say, and I uh, keep things going. So, you know, we talk about identity and I think that's a lot that's going on right now within the country is a bit of an identity crisis. I think a lot of people are trying to see where they fit in, where they don't fit in. And also that once they kind of establish an identity left, right, whoever it is, they kind of feel tied to it. And that, that loyalty to it, whether it's this team mentality or being part of the group or uh, feeling like you're on the right side of things, you know, a lot of that type of shit's perspective anyway. And while I want everyone to kind of let people do as they want to do, I do think that there is part of people that get tied to an identity or feeling like they want to fit in and be part of a group. And that group think really does start to take over. Um, and I think that's hard. And I think people really do want to find something that's an identity, but a lot of times that identity was never supposed to be permanent. Um, and bear with me here was a ramble, but more kind of along the lines that like, I've never, while I am very proud of the things that I accomplished and did within the Highland games, I never wanted to introduce myself as the Highland games athlete. Um, I always wanted to be Matt Vincent and the Highland games are a thing I did, not who I was. And I think it's important to kind of determine the difference between like who you are and what you are. Like you can be a lot of things, but it doesn't have to be who you are. You can be someone that likes to do sports or athletics. You don't have to be a power lifter. And while you can identify as a thing for a period of time, I think it's important that you give yourself that ability to change and welcome new things as they come. Because once this identity gets set and you're kind of stuck to it, it gets tougher to, you start thinking that everyone sees you this way, that, that, if you're not this, then, then what are you? You know, I've spent so long working on becoming, you know, a strong man or, or a Highland games athlete or a coach or a doctor or teacher, fucking any job description. Right. And you can get attached to it as this being this kind of identifier of you. And now as you continue on and want to make changes, a lot of people will hold on because of this time invested into being a thing or that, this fear of saying like, I changed my mind. Uh, I think that's one that holds all people back a lot of time is this, this not being able to say I was wrong or I changed my mind or just that this has run its course. Um, having that freedom kind of allows you to welcome new things and new ideas and try new stuff. Um, you know, I, I think that's where we run into trouble with guys getting out of the military is that, you know, you're a soldier, but now there's no, you're not a soldier anymore. Now you're back to being civilian. And so it's tough to let that thing down when you're proud of that thing you identify as. But a lot of things, like I said, run their course. Time as an athlete, me as a Highland games athlete, like I don't want to spend a ton of time for the rest of my life identifying with this highlight moment of when I was 30 or what fucking I don't even know anymore 30 before well, when I was competing and you know I just I think it's important that you give yourself that freedom to change and that you know welcoming the full process of being in a thing like I love that I got to do the Highland games for 10 years and really pour everything I could think of into the sport. Um, but when it ran its course, it was, it was time to move on. Uh, you know, I think about the first time I really thought about this kind of feeling of being attached to a thing or who you are. And it didn't hit me until uh, I was in college and I had this shitty Jeep. I had a 87 YJ that started sometimes and, 
was wasn't great. <laughs> it wasn't a great vehicle, but I fucking loved it, man. And I drove it all the way through high school and I drove it through most of college until it just became such a liability of, I don't know that I can get places at the time I'm supposed to be places. And so back before the Uber existed, um, I didn't have many options to get around if the old Jeep didn't start, say get to work or any of these other track practice or anything else. And so at some point when it came time to sell the Jeep, man, that was fucking tough. It was tough for me to sell it because I was really concerned that me having a Jeep was part of who I was and who people saw me as and was part of the identity that I wanted people to see me as, right? Like the, that kind of concept too, like from all angles trying to just but if I don't have this, then what, what am I or, or any of those type of things were the really thoughts I had at this age. And then like, fuck, I even remember talking to my girlfriend at the time and saying like, you know, if, if I sell the Jeep, is that a weird thing? You know, or like, like almost like, are you still attracted to me if I don't have this car? And, and if, you know, fuck, of course. But the fact that that thought was in my head means like that existed in that level of attachment to fucking a thing or even at that point, like a concept for me of <sighs> that this Jeep is who I am um, really created this fear response. And I didn't know what to do with it at that time, other than, you know, eventually it, it won out and I had to sell a Jeep because, <laughs> because of being responsible and doing stuff. But I moved past it. And then I remember feeling it again after I'd opened the bike shop and uh, kind of felt like that was who I was. I was Matt Vincent. I was this business owner. I was this entrepreneur and fucking man. Did I love that title at that age? Did I love the fact that I was fucking running a business and doing this thing? Meanwhile, the business is doing shitty because I, I don't have the ability to focus on it the right way because I'm, I'm a kid and I don't know enough. Um, I just didn't get it. And I just didn't get it. And at that level, like it was at, at that point of a real thing, it wasn't fake it till I make it. Like I just fucking didn't get the, uh, the concept behind business things, but you learn, right. And you move on and you get to try new things down the road. But it was tough when I got out of that to be not, the business owner and then kind of going back into what real jobs were. And now once I'd gotten, you know, kind of into those, those jobs, I never felt that I was that thing. I guess the only big picture thing that I still feel that I can identify as is I'm, I'm a salesman. I, uh, I did that for a long time as an outside sales rep and I liked it. I liked building relationships and I liked, um, not necessarily selling things, but I liked communicating and I liked sitting down and talking to people and I liked hearing different sides of stories and different ideas and concepts um, and conversations. I, I felt that that was the side of the job I was good at, was talking to people to figure out where they're from or what their interests are. And I, I always loved the relationship building. I liked meeting new customers and figuring out, uh, you know, how, how I could help or how I could be valuable to them as, as a person. And so that's what I always felt was, was the stuff I took away from it. And now even going forward, like I still feel a lot of those lessons were learned. And now there's definitely lessons I look at now that I learned from the bike shop days. Right. And so it's always just going to be this accumulation of stuff. So it's careful to get stuck in a specific time as an identity of a thing and not allow you to continue forward with, with growth. Like it's okay that you were a power lifter and now you're a marathon runner. What's up big boy? Oh, Ollie. Oh, Ollie. But yes. What are you doing, you ring-tailed idiot? It's okay to call him just really awful things because he doesn't speak uh, English or a language. He just yells. It's kind of cool that you can just talk shit to your pets. It's uh, very, very enjoyable. Um, but you don't want to get stuck as a thing. 
And I think about people with powerlifting that, that, or, you know, powerlifting or just different strength sports or, or things in general that you see them hold on to for too long. And man, there is a point where the getting out is good. <laughs> and there's a point where you fucking held on too long and a bitterness will come at some point that you can't quite perform the thing. It takes a very special mindset to just love being part of the thing so much that you don't have any ego about doing it. This would have not been me with the Highland Games. There is no fucking way I could have stomached slowly getting shittier at the sport. Um, and that would have really jaded a lot of things for me. So, I'm, you know, I'm glad that my identity wasn't stuck, that this was this thing that I was always going to be as this Highland Games guy. Um, I fucking love that I did it. And don't get me wrong, the two world championships that I have are probably the biggest door openers that I have for things. But if that's all I've got to bring into the room once I get there is talk about this one aspect that, that is me, it fucking gets old pretty quick and then you don't really build anything from that. So, you know, being a bit well-rounded and knowing more things and opening your eyes and just allowing yourself to be a bit more fluid in your thoughts um, just helps understand other ideas and, and not have to identify so hard against something and then just ride the company line per se of your identity to fucking think you got it figured out and, and that there's no fucking way this is wrong when in the end, like everything is just some bit of a perspective shift and concept that you're, you're working through. Or, or fucking should be like everything should be this linear growth path. And, you know, we all end up at weird spots and like whatever this time is for me feels pretty clear about some, some concepts of things of like where I'd like to go and what I hope things are. And these are big picture stuff. Like it's not the specific things of like, I'd like to do X it's I'd like to be happy. I'd like to live with as little unnecessary stress as possible. Um, that's to me what gives a very good life. That's, that's what I like. I like being able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And I want to do it without a whole lot of fucking hassle. I don't care for inconvenience. And that's the number one thing I want to eliminate from my life. So speaking of inconvenience, if uh, you want to save yourself some money on anything from Mark Bell slingshot, you head right over there, you slap in code. I'm so 15 and you can change your life. Uh, you start following Mark Bell and listen to information. He's got to share. You slap a slingshot on, you get a bigger bench, you be bigger chest. Next thing you know, paychecks are falling from the sky because everyone gives you everything you want. That's what happens when you use code UMSO15 at Mark Bell Slingshot. So go check that out and get the best stuff ever. <laughs> All right. As I'm just going to continue to fucking ramble on aimlessly here, uh, I, think, I think there's a fear to it as well of like that you, you did this thing. And like I said, like the way I felt about, about selling my Jeep, this fear of if I'm not that, then I don't know who I am. And so it's important while you're in this journey not to fully identify as the power lifter or that you know your whole life is built on an activity instead of knowing what you're really into. Um, while I loved the Highland Games, what I loved was strength. What I loved is strength sports. Um, this just happened to be the one that I excelled at the most. And I, I tried all the others. I just wasn't fucking very good at them. So, you know, who knows if, if I would have had a more natural ability for strongman or weightlifting or any of that, but where, where my history as a thrower in college, you know, we even just skipped over that as a, you know, identifier of being a track and field athlete or, you know, being an athlete in high school as a football player or any of those type of things that you have to move on from. So it's tough once you, it's when you pick one as an adult, it's, it's tougher to let it go. You know that high school football is going to fucking end, but people don't even let that go. Like it's always their thing. You have these Al Bundys of the world who are going to wander around and talk about the fucking coolest thing they did in their life was when they were 16. And that's a fucking bummer. 
like I want more for people than that. I want more life and more exposure and more exposure to different ideas and thoughts and activities just so that you know more. It's simply just acquiring fucking XP points and whatever this life is. And the more you have, the more you level up and the smarter you get. You just have to do it all in real time. Like experiences are everything. And so like limiting yourself to this tiny hole of experiences doesn't really allow for a ton of growth after a certain point. And so while chasing growth and chasing those, those ideas and look and fucking back to lifting. One of the things that bugs me the fuck most is that the whole reason I got into strongman or strength was I wanted to find out how fucking strong I am. I think that's pretty logical, right? And with powerlifting, I found it. I found my total that anytime I tried to go past that, I got hurt. Uh, with strongman, I also found my limitations because I just couldn't get, there wasn't a way for me to get better and stay healthy. Same, same type of deal. Um, and with you know, powerlifting, I, I found the same thing. And with Highland Games, I figured out how far I could throw all of those events. Now, I think there's a point where I could say, whoa, if I did this or this, but that's not the fucking truth. I found out. I, I was honestly giving it my all, and, and for the time that I had the ability to give it a go, that's the best it was ever going to get. I can't do it better now. I'm older. I am beat up, I, whatever the reason. So I'm not mad that I found what I looked for. Now, you can fucking deal with your own shit that you didn't find the answer you wanted, but that doesn't mean you didn't find what you were looking for. And so having gratitude for even just the fact that you did a thing, much less, you know, chase some fucking arbitrary number. I just think it's, you know, being stoked that you're just part of a thing instead of letting that thing fucking own you. I think just own it instead and know that, it's a, you know, it's a fucking tool. It's a, it's a time to try a thing to be your best at. So I don't know how long this has gone on, but I rambled on enough. That's a, uh, it feels excellent. So uh, I'm going to do a couple of these cause I feel like it and I want to get better at talking and communicating. And so the way that I'm going to do that is running it by you guys. And so I'm going to continue running through weirdness and um, just basically letting the old brain run free. So Thank you guys for listening. Um, I would love a five-star review. I don't know if I goddamn deserve it or not, but whatever. Most likely not. Maybe this is your cup of tea. Whatever. So uh, we're going to do more Q&As and stuff like that again and get to uh, talking more with you guys. And maybe maybe bring a guest or two on every now and then, like, um, like, a, like a fan. A fan to hold a conversation and see what we can discuss. Who knows? I don't know. That sounds kind of fun. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. Spread hate, always party, and check out our sponsors, Hybrid Performance Method, Heat Brand Goods, Habit Coffee, Mark Bell Slingshot, Stay Classy Meats, Eat Right Foods, and Power Dot. Code UMSO saves you cash at all those places except Slingshot. You got to go UMSO15. Tell them how much you want to save. Get it. Thank you guys for listening. Spread hate, always party. Mm-hmm.